Welcome to gradients. We're going to talk about how things move from point A to point B within the body, and that's specifically moving down their chemical or concentration gradients. When I say things, I'm talking about molecules. For example, glucose will move passively from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. Specifically, glucose will move from our blood plasma into our body cells where it's used to make ATP, but it's moving from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. Anytime entities within the body are moving down their gradients from high to low, that is a passive process and energy is not required. This lecture is going to focus upon sodium and potassium, but it's going to apply to any ions or molecules within the body moving from high to low. Okay, so I want to take this moment just to highlight what day it is. It is Tuesday, June 2nd, now known as Blackout Tuesday, in remembrance of George Floyd, who died at the hands of three or four Minneapolis police officers, and also highlighting that black lives do matter. And one thing I do want to point out that when we talk about black lives do matter, it's not suggesting no other lives matter. What it is suggesting that it seems like specific bureaucracies, institutions, governmental agencies within this country forget that black lives matter. But black lives absolutely matter. And this is really significantly important to us in, in education because certain socioeconomic groups within this country, state, and even in this community have been academically marginalized for years. And that continues to be perpetuated and causes problems with our educational system and our society at large. So I just want to point out Black Lives Do Matter we need to do something collectively, locally, and nationally to bridge that gap. So without further ado, we're going to talk about something less important than that, and that is ion gradients. Okay, so if we look at this slide right here, this is showing a ball rolling downhill. And the whole importance I'm trying to show with this slide is that that ball will move passively downhill from high to low, from an area of high elevation or higher elevation to an area of low elevation. That is a passive process. But if we are now trying to move that ball uphill, that is no longer passive. That is an active process that requires work in the form of energy. Okay. So what we're really focusing on on this lecture, once again, is the passive process of ions or molecules moving down their chemical gradients, otherwise known as their concentration gradients. So let's take a look at this body cell right here. All body cells, at least in normal situations, have a high concentration of sodium outside of the cell and a low concentration of sodium inside of the cell. The way this is set up, which is generally how the, the body is set up, is that sodium always wants to move into cells, down its chemical gradients, otherwise known as its concentration gradients. Now, just so we're clear, sodium, which is a charged atom, requires a channel protein to move into the cell, and that's what I'm showing right here in pink. This is a protein channel that sodium must move through to get past the phospholipid bilayer of this cell membrane. Nonetheless, as long as that channel is there and that channel is open, sodium will move down its gradient from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. If we look at move this here really quick. If we look at potassium, potassium has a similar situation. The only difference between potassium and sodium is that there is a 
high concentration of potassium inside of cells and a low concentration of potassium outside of cells. So that will suggest that sodium will move down its chemical gradient, otherwise known as its concentration gradient, from high to low, which is from inside the cell to outside of the cell. Like sodium, it requires that channel protein that we see right here. Sodium will move from, excuse me, potassium will move from high to low. Okay, so we just talked about chemical gradients, but we also need to talk about what's known as electrical gradients, and that is related to what's known as a voltage within our body cells. Our body cells tend to have a voltage, which is a differential in charge between the outside of the cell and the inside of the cell. So what we can see here, it's positively charged on the outside of the cell and negatively charged on the interior of the cell. Generally speaking, the charge within cells is going to be roughly negative 70 to negative 90 millivolts, and that is somewhat variable. And just so we're clear, as I'm talking about all of this in this lecture, I'm really talking about cells at rest. These variables of gradients and specifically of electrical charge with cells will change dramatically depending on the state of the cell. Is the cell depolarized, repolarized, or repolarizing, or hyperpolarized? But at rest, our body cells have a negative charge on the interior and a positive charge on the exterior. Okay, so if we apply those principles to sodium, once again, I'm going to draw the same cell right here. The only difference is I am showing you that this cell has a negative charge. Try to fix that a little bit. Has a negative charge on the interior of the cell. So now we see two variables that are influencing the movement of sodium into that cell. First off, we have sodium wanting to move down its chemical gradient, which is what we just spoke about. But the positive charge on sodium is attracted to the negativity on the inside of the cell. And because you remember from your chemistry class, opposite charges are attracted to each other, sodium will move down into the cell, or let's just say move into the cell, down its electrical gradient because the posit positively charged sodium is attracted to the negative charge of the interior of the cell. So now if we look at sodium, there are two factors that stimulate the movement of sodium into cells. There's the chemical gradients moving from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration, and we call that diffusion. But there is the electrical gradient as well. That is to say the positive charge of sodium is attracted to the negative charge of the interior of the cell. As a result, we suggest that sodium has an electrochemical gradient favoring it to move into body cells. Now let's take a look at potassium. Once again, we looked at potassium. It has the, it's incentivized to move out of the cell down its chemical gradient. But now if we look at the charge, and I don't have negative 70 millivolts drawn in the middle of the cell, but just assume I, I did. It's the same charge as we saw in the sodium. Certainly we see a negative charge within the interior of the cell right here, all the way around the cell. But we talked about potassium wanting to move down its chemical gradient from inside the cell to outside of the cell. And that's no different in this picture. But one thing you may notice is that potassium is positively charged. In full disclosure, these positive charges that I have on potassium and previously on sodium really should be superscripts up here. Just in this program, there's no way, at least I don't know a way to make it a superscript. So the positive charge should not really be down here at the bottom. It should be up here. And forgive me for that. Okay, so once again, potassium wants to move down its chemical gradient. But potassium, the positive charge of potassium, is not attracted to this positive charge 
on the exterior of the cell. As a matter of fact, based on charge alone, potassium would prefer to stay in the cell where it is negatively charged. Once again, opposite charges are attracted to each other. But in this situation, potassium's chemical gradient is so large that it disregards its electrical non-attraction to the exterior of the cell. So in short, what we have here is sodium maintains an electrochemical gradient favoring it to move into body cells, somatic cells, and potassium maintains only a chemical gradient because it's actually moving in opposition to its electrical gradient. That's it. Don't forget George Floyd, Black Lives Matter. We'll see you next lecture.